Welcome to today's video. My name is Ben Taylor from Ben's Guide. And if you own a Canon EOS RP, a Canon EOS R, or a Canon 90D, and you wanna learn the best video settings for any of these cameras, then this video is gonna be just for you. Okay guys, without any further ado, let's jump in and get started. First up is frame rate. This is one of the basic things you need to understand on the EOS RP. Click this button here, and then touch this button on your screen. Now you will see some options at the bottom. This is frame rate. 24 frames per second is going to give you the most cinematic film looking footage. So if that's what you're after, you should definitely choose this option. Now if you don't see this on your screen, it's because you don't have the latest firmware or it's because you haven't swapped it over in your video system. If you wanna learn how to download Canon firmware, then you can do that by clicking this video showing at the top of the screen now. Alternatively, click into the menu and then change your video system over to NTSC. If you're looking to create nice, smooth, slow motion style footage, then the next frame rate you should check out is 60 frames per second. You see, when you slow this down in your video editing software, it's gonna provide you with the most beautiful, smooth, slow motion looking footage. And this is something which is used on films and documentaries alike. You also have 4K option on the EOS RP. You have this on the 90D and you have it on the EOS R as well. I find that I will shoot B-roll with 4K mode. And this is because the autofocus is not as good as it is in the HD mode. Talking about autofocus, it's next on our list. And the EOS RP has one of the best autofocuses around. Click on the Q option and then the AF option to then get the autofocus mode showing. First up, you have a zone autofocus. This is a large square, which you can see here. You can drag this around to focus on different areas in your scene. And this is particularly good for following subjects which are moving around and good for focusing on bigger objects in your scene. Now I will say that I use this quite a bit and you can also use this option here, but it's very similar and I've actually found using both of them separately that there's not much difference. It really gives you the same kind of use where you can just focus on bigger objects, but not quite as big as the zone autofocus give you. The third option on the list, we're not really gonna look at, and that's because it doesn't offer anything more than the first two options. But the fourth option is actually very useful. The fourth option is a lot smaller. This is also a zone autofocus, but it's a single point. And as you can see, if I click this off, that the square is considerably smaller. This is better for focusing on smaller things in your scene. One thing I love to do with this is actually to do something called focus pulls. Watch now. I'm gonna click on the button in the background and then it pulls the focus right to that. If I click on the watch, it pulls the focus to that. Now this is something which is used regularly in things like films and documentaries and it's a really really nice effect which can create some really beautiful video footage. Next up we have an even smaller autofocus option. This is good for really getting the focus on tiny things in the scene. I'll show you what I mean. If I just drag this over and put it on the bottle, in fact let's put it on the top of the bowl, the cork here. And what this is gonna do is it's only going to focus on the cork and then it's gonna hold the focus there. So it's particularly good for smaller things. Finally, but certainly not least, is this option. This is face tracking or eye autofocus. Now I absolutely love this option, it's my favorite, because if you're looking to track a subject, as you can see, it tracks it all through the scene. And this is brilliant when filming any people at all because you know that you can just press record and it's gonna hold the focus all the way through. Next up is picture profiles. These give you an option to color your footage. 
If I click on this button and then on the picture profiles button here, the options will show you what I mean. First up, you have auto mode. And this is good for processing subjects or scenes. Next up is standard. This is particularly good for getting nice, sharp and vivid pictures. Third, you have portrait and this is something I use a lot. It gives you nice skin tones. Fourth, you have landscape, which is nice to get them vivid blues and greens in the foliage. The list goes on. But one of the best things about this is you have your own user def options. This means ones that you can edit yourself. In fact, there are three in total. Let's click into one of these and I'll show you what I mean. You can now see that you've got different options that you can change. So you've got the first one here, which is sharpness. You can change the strength of that. You've got contrast, you've got saturation, and you have finally color tone. This is brilliant because if you want to create something called a flat profile, then you can take all of these settings down and then you can color grade the footage in your video editing software later on and get this really nice cinematic effect. If you'd like to know all about that and how to do it, then I've actually created a video showing you how to create a flat profile in your Canon camera. Check that out by clicking the card showing at the top of the video now. Next up, we've got the best quality that you can create. This means the best video quality that you can get on your EOS RP. Click on the ISO option here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure your ISO is low at say around about 100. Now when you're shooting in the daytime, you should be able to shoot around about 1 to 400 most of the time. And this will give you nice clean looking results. But if you're shooting low light or at the evening time, then you're going to need to pump this ISO up quite a bit to something like 1600. Now this should be absolutely fine and won't create too much noise in your film footage but try not to push it up any more than 1600 as then you might start getting some degradation in your video footage. Now, when you're creating a movie or a video, you wanna make sure that you've got nice audio. So click on sound recording and you wanna make sure this is on manual. When you've got that option selected here, you want to bring your volume or your recording level all the way down and that's so you don't pick up any background noise. You might be wondering why? Well, this is because anytime you're looking to get good audio, honestly, you need to use an external mic. So you'll plug the external mic in and this will give you the best results. Now, don't worry, because if you don't know what external mics to use, I'm gonna leave a list of them in the description and this will give you a good starting point for an external mic that you can use going forward. Finally, if you're looking to get the most stable and least jerky footage possible, then you've got two options. A lens with a stabilizer built in, which is the cheapest and probably gonna to appeal to the most of you. Most times this will work good enough, but sometimes when you wanna go next level, you're gonna need something like a gimbal. This is very expensive, but honestly, it is so professional that it will look like you're making professional videos. And they are the best video settings for the Canon EOS RP, the EOS R, and the 90D. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's been really valuable for you. Now, of course, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below the video, and I will come back to you after the video and answer any questions you have. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and join our growing community here at Ben's Guide. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, I hope it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.